Hi, I'm Mrs. Comrie, and I'm going to read a portion of The Agony of Bun O'Keefe by Heather Smith, just the first few paragraphs of chapter one. She yelled, go on, get out. So I did. It wasn't easy. The path to the door was filled in again. I tried to keep it clear, but it was like shoveling in a snowstorm. There was only so much I could pile up on either side before it started caving in again. Not that I left the house much. At one point I had to turn sideways and suck in. I wondered how she did it. She was over 300 pounds. As I inched forward, I saw frozen smiles through a clear plastic bin, Barbie dolls, $10, as is. I knew without looking, there'd be some without limbs. I tripped on a lamp and fell on a bike. She didn't even laugh. The only sound was the tick, tick, tick of the bike's spinning wheel. I watched till it slowed to a stop. I took one last look at her before I disappeared behind a mountain of junk. She was nestled into a pile of garbage bags, a cup of tea balanced on her chest, and I wondered, how will she get up without me? Boxes and bags lined the walls. As I squeezed down the hall, I said, fairy anthropy, over and over, because I liked the way it bounced in my mouth. It was one of the words I said out loud when I hadn't used my voice in a while. It meant having the power to turn into an animal. I'd read it in an old anthropology textbook and I thought, wouldn't it be nice if my mother could turn herself into a hummingbird? That way she could flit in and out through the piles of junk that filled every nook and cranny of the house. It was a nice thought, her being a shapeshifter. Maybe, I decided, that's how I should remember her. I walked down our laneway with my arms crossed over my chest. I'd forgotten my jacket. I wouldn't go back for it, not after the trouble it took me to get out. I counted Mississippis down the long gravel road. By the time I reached the highway, I'd had two coughing fits. She did the trek every day, an empty wagon on the way into town, a full one on the way back. I figured she had exceptional lungs. At the main road, I stuck out my thumb. What I knew about hitchhiking came from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, came home in a box of VHS tapes. When I told her we didn't have a player, she said, there she goes, never satisfied, always asking for more. When I pointed out that I had asked for nothing and was simply stating a fact, she didn't talk to me for days. Months later, a VHS player showed up and I popped in the tape. I watched it on the floor model TV she pulled home on a wooden toboggan. It had a missing button, so I had to change the channel with a pair of pliers. The screen had fuzzy lines going through it, which made the movie even scarier. The hitchhiker wanted to kill people. I had no intentions of killing anyone, so I figured there was no harm in sticking out my thumb on the main road. I went to St. John's. Seemed as good a place as any. Only two hours away, and easy to disappear into.